there, it's Delina Rose with Kevin Organic. Today we're going to be making Tyvek beads. Tyvek is a construction material. You can buy a Tyvek suit and cut it up, <coughs> or you can get Tyvek by the roll. And this is what's left of a larger roll. This, when it was full, was $56 for the roll, and I bought it at a hardware store. Um, but you don't need a whole roll, obviously, to make these beads. If you visit a construction site or if you know anybody in your family or some friends that do construction, ask them if they have any extra smaller bits of Tyvek lying around. Because once they've finished a project, they might have little bits that just isn't enough to do a bigger project. And this is what's so great about using Tyvek, especially as Cabin Organic. We like projects that are upcycled, recycled, or good for the environment. And so making Tyvek beads is a great way of using up a material that would otherwise end up in the landfill. So it is plastic. And what you're going to see me do in the videos is <coughs> take some Tyvek, we're gonna unroll it, and we're gonna cut it into squares. And then we're gonna paint the squares. And once the squares are painted, we'll cut them up into strips, roll them up, and we'll heat them. And because Tyvek is plastic, it will melt and form these really interesting beads. I have some right here. And because it is just a few weeks from Valentine's Day, I have chosen really pretty pinks, purples, with a bit of silver, a bit of white um, as our bead color today. But I will show you at the end of the video many other beads that I have made just a few months ago when I was doing projects for Christmas. I'll also show some pictures at the end of the video of some jewelry that I've made with these beads. Also, you have to stay tuned for part two. We're gonna take the beads that we made in today's video and we're gonna turn them into earrings and a few different kinds of necklaces. So please come back for that video as well. And if you are enjoying our videos, please like and subscribe. That is a powerful way of supporting small businesses like me and helping us generate more content for you, more videos like this for you. Also, I want to give a shout out to Patricia Fenty. She has a YouTube channel called Create and Crochet with Patricia Fenty. <coughs> so you have to go and check out her video after you've watched mine, if you haven't already, uh, because she is where I learned how to make Tyvek beads. And I am forever grateful to you, Patricia, for teaching all of us how to work with Tyvek. And um, also she has another video on how to embellish her Tyvek beads. And I also want to say she has a really excellent video on using ribbon yarn to make boho necklaces. So I also want to put that link down below for her because I learned how to work with ribbon yarn from her. This is one of the things I love about YouTube is we learn from each other, we create a community of learners, and as we each one of us experiments, um, we can share our results with the community and say, I tried this, you tried that, and we'll build on each other's learning. Anyway, without further ado, let's get making some beads. All right, so here we go. You can see that I have cut about a foot, a 12 inch strip off of my Tyvek, and then I'm cutting that strip into thirds. And I don't measure, I like to just eyeball it but you can measure if you like. Now I've got the squares and I am just squeezing paint directly onto the Tyvek. <clears throat> In my experience, you really can't be too precious with your painting. And I also found that painting in big blocks of color actually works the best for me, for the look that I'm after. But you're gonna have to try different things and see what works for you. But uh, my, first, my first few rounds of Tyvek, I was being quite careful and I was painting little designs and patterns. And once you cut this up in strips and roll it all up, most of that gets covered. And really it's just the edges that um, get melted show the color. Everything else is rolled up and hidden. So 
you just want to get your Tyvek squares covered in color. And if you want a monochromatic bead, you can just paint it all one color. However, I do highly recommend painting at least two coats on your Tyvek. If you only do one coat, then when you go to melt it, some of the white of the Tyvek is going to show through. And that's okay if that's the look that you're after. But <clears throat> if you want a nice, rich, deep color of a bead, then I do recommend a base coat. Now, I use acrylic metallic paints, and I will throw in a picture somewhere to show you what those look like. And But I also have a boatload of normal acrylic paint just left over from other projects. So rather than go out and buy a lot of expensive metallic paint, <coughs> I like to use just regular acrylic paint for my base coat. And then I found that when I go on top with my more expensive metallic paint, I actually need less paint to cover it up. And uh, so that's how I do it. But you can do all of your coats with metallic paint. Now I'm doing white blotches here, but I plan on covering that up with some lighter colors later and with some silver as well. So I chose white as my base coat. This pink that I'm working on here, it is called Rose Quartz, and it's quite see-through, like it's quite a thin, thin coverage for the first coat. So by the second coat, you'll see that it looks a lot better. And again, one of those reasons why two coats is really the way to go. You might also want to be blending your colors a little bit. Um, I do a little bit. Um, usually by the second coat, things are getting all mushed together. <clears throat> so, as I said, you don't want to be too precious with it. Just get your color on there. And uh, once you cut it all up, it'll, it'll look really neat with all the different blotches. Now, when I did my second coat, I thought I was recording, and I actually hadn't pressed the button when I thought I had. So all I have is a still picture <clears throat> of how the Tyvek looks with the second coat. And then, depending on how thick your paint is, Sometimes it only takes a few hours to dry and you can cut it up right away. I let mine dry for 24 hours because it was quite thick in some areas. <coughs> so there you have it folks, my abstract art. And I did about five pieces of Tyvek all together. And here's what they look like at the end of the first coat. Actually, no, I only did And here is what it looks like after the second coat. You can see the colors are getting much more rich. And then I actually went back and did a third coat where I added some silver. And you'll see that in the next, <coughs> in the next shot here. And so you won't see any more white. And I painted some lighter purple and a bit of pink on top of the white. So there is a sneak peek there of how the different Tyvek sheets look like. And you know, they don't look like much at this stage, <coughs> but they have the colors that I wanted. And so I was quite happy with that. Now I'm going to start cutting out the strips. <coughs> and other people that have posted videos on making Tyvek beads, some people will actually measure 
or they'll use a ruler and make lines. Right now what I'm doing is cutting off the edge at a bit of an angle so that now I can go and make a triangular shape. So you'll see the base is wider than the tip, but I am not cutting it a very sharp tip at the end because that's I want my bead a little fatter. And so that's the shape that I want for these beads. <coughs> and you'll have fun just experimenting with different um, with different shapes. Um, if you do a really triangular one, then you'll get a more eye-shaped bead or a, um, some people would call it like a cocoon shape where it's really thin at the tip and really fat and round in the middle. But I like mine a little more uniform where they're not so um, thin, I guess, at the edges. So that's my favorite way of cutting the strips. But you definitely want to experiment though. I also want my earring beads to look more like columns <coughs> and less like an eye. So that's why I am cutting it this shape. So yeah, again, I am just eyeballing it. I've done enough of these that I know roughly how to get what I want. And I don't have to measure and I don't have to draw lines or anything. And actually, I like it when a line is a little bit wobbly. Um, it To me, it just adds to the organic feel of these beads. Also, take a look at some of the individual strips as they're being cut. So now you can see what I mean about not being too precious about your design and your patterns or what you're trying to paint on the square. Like You don't have to make it pretty. Um, once you cut all these strips up, uh, not a whole lot of your designs are going to show. But what is going to show is just blotches of color. <coughs> and that is perfect because when you melt them then there's enough of an area of the color to show. Now I'm I cut a few sheets that are longer. The last sheet that I cut up it was a square and that is just the right length for me for my earrings. But these ones you'll notice I'm cutting the the triangular shape a little longer. And these are going to be for pendants. <coughs> and what I will do when I'm making pendants is I will roll one sheet up and I will melt it. And then I will add a thinner sheet on top of that and melt it. And so it makes for a bigger bead, a little bit more dramatic and a little bit heftier. But because this is a melting project, I like to melt that first layer before adding a whole second layer on. That way everything gets a chance to be melted together. <coughs> and you'll see here wherever I've cut really thin strips just to get that nice triangular, triangular shape or trapezoid shape, um, I use all those thin strips and I will make teeny tiny beads with those. <coughs> So nothing gets wasted here. Also, sometimes if you make a bead and it all happens to be one color, then you can always add a little bit of a strip, a thinner strip that has a different color. So you can add that right on top of the melted bead, glue it on and melt that on top and it will just melt right into the bead and become part of the pattern. All right, so I use tacky glue to glue my tie back together. I use bamboo skewers. I use clothespins. That's to hold them closed and keep them from unraveling. There's the bamboo skewers. I keep them in a glass jar and you'll see why in just a bit. I've got my scissors still handy there in case I need to cut up any bits and add them. <coughs> Sorry about this cough. It just feels a little dry today. So now I'm going to be just rolling up some of this Tyvek on the bamboo skewer. Now that is quite a big piece of a Tyvek. So that is obviously going to be a larger pendant. And you'll see the, the index finger on my left hand. It's I had an injury last summer and so I can't actually bend it anymore. So I've just 
got to figure out my own way of rolling things. <clears throat> You're going to want to roll that on quite tightly so that it'll hang on to the bamboo skewer while you're heating it. You don't want it sliding around. But if you ever do one or two that are a bit loose, that's okay. You can usually balance it and it will be fine. It's just a bit safer <coughs> if it's nice and tight. Now you'll notice that I'm just keeping things centered because sometimes the strip, if it isn't cut properly, and as you can see, mine are not cut properly. I just eyeballed it. It may want to lean to the left or lean to the right. So it's okay to just guide it and keep it centered. And it's okay if one side gets a little bit loose for a, a few turns. Because once you heat it, it's all going to melt together. So it does not have to be all snug and you have to follow the tie deck wherever it wants to go. <coughs> just keep it centered or keep it where you want it to be. So I've added the tacky glue. So I'm going to spread that on. Now I take my clothespin. I put it on, but you'll see that I put it on and then I rotate it a little bit in the direction that the Tyvek is. And that way the, it doesn't buckle the Tyvek and it just keeps that all wrapped tightly while I go ahead and wrap some more Tyvek. Although, as Patricia pointed out in her video, if you leave the clothespin on too long, sometimes when you go to take it off, it takes um, a glob of the paint right off the tie bag. And I have had that happen. And if that happens to you, you can just touch that spot up with your paintbrush and some more paint before or after you melt it. And it'll be just as good as new. And sometimes you can just leave it and melt it and it'll disappear <coughs> while you uh, while you work with the bead. So there we go. We're just rolling up another bead there. And this one is also quite a larger bead. Glue that down. And I like to do maybe seven at a time or ten at a time. Or you can do them all. Just, uh, you know, just take your clothespins off <clears throat> after five minutes or so so that it doesn't wreck your paint job. Okay, I've got a, a bunch here ready to go. <coughs> Just showing you. And at this stage, I can take the clothespins off. Sometimes I just leave them on though. And then as I grab them to heat them, I just quickly take the pins off. So there you can see I've got some that are really big, some that are medium size, and some that are teeny tiny. And the teeny tiny ones are just those extra strips that I cut off on the edges and I didn't want to waste them. So there's how they look all rolled up and they're already pretty. So I'm getting ready to heat. <coughs> I bought this silicone mat at the dollar store and I just like to lay it down so that I have a safe place to put my heat gun. This is an embossing heat tool that I found at a thrift store. Okay, this is where the magic really begins. And this is where Tyvek gets really addictive. Once you start making Tyvek beads, you will be hooked for life because this is the moment that is so magical and makes all that work of painting and cutting uh, all worthwhile. <clears throat> so I usually start by just heating up the, the whole bead and then I just start turning it uh, around and around in my fingers and it does not take long although you really don't want to rush it um, if you overcook it it sometimes it looks kind of yucky um, it balls up but sometimes when it balls up <coughs> that's actually pretty cool okay so this is why I have the glass jar once you finish your 
heating your Tyvek on the bamboo skewer, you're going to want to put that skewer in a glass jar upright so that it could cool down. And it does not take long to cool down because it's, it's just plastic. So here we go, we've got another bead and if you just watch it, it really is quick. And I use metallic paint for the top coat. <clears throat> so as it melts, that metallic paint just looks beautiful and shiny. Um, it really truly does look like a metal bead. And as you melt it, it is not it's not really uniform, so every bead is unique. Every bead is a work of art. <coughs> Quite a transformation. See, you can see there, that one was a bit loose because it wasn't centered. And so one side kind of gaped a little. But it is all perfectly okay because once you start melting it, it all just collapses inward and sticks it wants to stick to itself so that that gap closes up this one's interesting because it's really <clears throat> it's making a lot of holes and that's why um, that's why you do a few layers of paint and also sometimes it'll make holes but it just opens up to the layer underneath and that's okay because your layer underneath has color as well I just want to show one more here and it's a teeny tiny bead so it really doesn't look like much but when you heat it it all sticks together and forms this beautiful little metallic bead that looks like an abstract work of art just beautiful okay I think I only have one more on this clip so <coughs> I'll just uh, let you see it one more time. And this is in real time. I am not speeding things up. This is really literally how long it takes. It is so quick. And then when you're done, you are left with a pile of gorgeous <laughs> Tyvek beads to do your projects with. Great. In this next clip, I'm just showing you <clears throat> how I've taken one of my larger Tyvek beads. This one is going to be a pendant. And this is how easy it is to make it a little larger. So I've got an extra strip there, and I'm just cutting that one in maybe about half. Because I don't want a big bulge in the middle. <coughs> but I just want to enlarge the bead a little bit. So I put some glue on there. And I glue it right on to the melted bead. And it doesn't matter if it sticks perfectly or not. This is just a temporary solution till the Tyvek melts onto the first layer. <clears throat> so I've got that round and around. And what I like is this is a great way of adding more color. So if you have a large bead and it, it seems to be mostly one color, then just grab a tiny little piece or make a tiny little piece of another color and just glue that right on and melt that <clears throat> and then you'll see that it'll add some real visual beauty like look at that now i've got all these really funky stripes and uh which looks amazing when i go and melt that Okay, so we're going to take that same large bead that has that extra layer onto it and we will melt that next layer on. I think I've got about three, maybe four beads that I did this with in this batch. <clears throat> but you honestly can't even tell that I added another layer. It just looks like it was all one piece.
looks great. All right, we're going to just keep on going here. <clears throat> I was going to cut some of these out, but I thought some of these beads, they look quite different from the other beads. So I would like to give you a, a good sampling of the different results. <coughs> the second layer, it's always quicker because you don't have to melt that one underneath and the second layer is not quite as thick as the first layer. I love that. I personally like to wear art art jewelry and this to me is very one of a kind <clears throat> and as you'll see in the next video we will we'll be wrapping that with wire and adding beads and it's it's going to look quite amazing Pretty. There we go. That's quite a, actually the bead isn't that big because my hand is <clears throat> a few inches behind it. But, but when you're done all of your melting, this is what you end up with. You get a jar of all of these beautiful beads. And this is the best part, is taking them off. You uh, just have to slide them off your skewer. They cool really quickly. <clears throat> and you just slide them off with your hand. And what you're left with is a pile of beautiful Tyvek beads. All right, and let's have a look at our creations. They are beautiful. And this is the other reason why Tyvek is so addictive is because the finished product is so pretty. Like it almost doesn't need anything else. You could put that on a ribbon and it would be a beautiful necklace or a beautiful bookmark <coughs> or even a Christmas ornament. Now here I just wanted to give you a sneak peek of some of the other Tyvek beads that I made. This was a couple months ago I was preparing for Christmas. This is one Tyvek bead that I actually have on a bead cap with some chains. It's hard to see because it's a dark green, but there's some red, there's some white. There's hardly any white left because I used it all up. The, this copper one, oh, it's my favorite. And I have one really beautiful necklace. I will add some pictures and show you what I have made but I think I'll show you in the next video actually let's keep this video about beads and next time you come <coughs> we will make stuff with our pink beads but I will do a little show and tell of all the earrings and necklaces that I made with all of these colors so some are just one color and some are a mix now these ones are interesting. These are the ones that I only did one coat and you can see, I'll bring them nice and close. You can see it's kind of whitish underneath. So this is why I say do the two coats and uh, it'll be worth, worth it to have a deep, rich color of Tyvek bead. I hope you enjoyed this video on making gorgeous Tyvek beads. Once again, thank you so much, Patricia, for showing me how to make these. And I hope you will go to her uh, YouTube channel <clears throat> and watch her video as well. And if you happen to notice my sparkly pave earrings in the introduction, I just want to let you know that they are for sale on my store, $20 a pair. Go to www.cabinorganic.shop. I will put the link below. 
And if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. It goes a long way to supporting small businesses and makers like myself. Have a great day and please join us for part two where we're going to turn these beautiful beads into jewelry.